in the automotive world, brands will give us lots of adjectives when they're trying to describe their new cars. They say the car will be sporty. They say it will be dynamic. It will be stylish looking. It will offer all the features, technology. But very few brands come out with a statement saying, well, comfort. Comfort and human comfort is what we are after. Why am I talking about comfort? Well, today we are driving the Citroen C5 Aircross. And Citroen says that their primary objective in getting the C5 Aircross and other products to India is to enhance the amount of comfort that people get out of their cars. But to give you some more details about Citroen, it's not a brand that people are aware about in India. But Citroen has been in the business of making cars for over 100 years now. They're a quintessentially French brand. The cars are stylish, they're quirky, they're focused on humans, and they do offer some phenomenal ride comfort on their products in Europe. And they're trying to bring the same thing in India. Also, Citroen has been a technological tour de force for many, many decades now. One of their cars, the DS, is a particular favorite of mine. Launched in 1955, it was so futuristic that even now, almost 70 years after, it still looks like it could be in production. It was a great car. They also did cars like the Traction Avant, one of the first cars to feature front-wheel drive. In fact, the first production car, mass production car, to feature a monocoque chassis that is now so common. Virtually every car sold in India, at least a vast majority of them, are monocoques. And there is one typical Citroen car that you will recognize for sure. You would have seen it in movies and TV shows worldwide. It's the 2CV. It was designed to cater to farmers after the Second World War when good roads were very rare. And from that ethos itself, Citroen has been focusing on comfort. Today, we're going to drive the C5 Aircross and see whether it can transform the game of comfort when it comes to cars in India. Of course, since their French design is a very important aspect for Citroen, and that starts from their logo itself. This double chevron design is timeless, it's a classic, and you would have seen it in different forms all over the world. When it comes to the C5's design, well, it's not a typical SUV, it's more of a crossover. It's not butch, it's not in your face. It has a slightly softer profile, and I think it looks quite good. The front of the C5, of course, is dominated by the chevron grille. Even though it's got a lot of chrome, it's been well integrated and doesn't look too brash. I kind of like how the front works. The lights also are layered in multiple levels. You get the daytime uh, LED running lamps, you get the headlamps, you have the fog lamps. And I think it's quite a striking looking car because it's very distinctive. It's not a car you'll confuse for anything else. What I like also are the wheels. The 18 inch wheels really fill up the arches nicely and make the car look very balanced. And I think the 235 rubber just fits perfectly. It gives the car a great stance. When I talk about French design and quirkiness, well, you see this sort of uh, floorboard or cladding running alongside the doors. It's got some interesting detailing in silver here. It's got different surfaces. And I think the large glass house also works well. You also get a double-toned roof, which I think is a, a good fashion running now. Cars usually look quite good with a sort of a different black roof uh, opposed to the body color. You also get body cladding, the plastic cladding all around the car. And the rear is also quite distinctive because another touch of the rear, which is really nice, these LED tail lamps look absolutely fantastic when they're lit up and at night. You again get the double chevron logo here, the Citroen badging, C5 Aircross. And overall, while the Citroen might not look like a butch SUV, like I said earlier, I still think it's a pretty classy looking vehicle and something that looks more mature. It's probably designed more for a slightly more mature customer who's not looking to make an aggressive impression. When we met Citroën officials today earlier, uh, they clearly indicated that the prime competition they think for the C5 Aircross is going to be the Volkswagen Tiguan Allspace and the Hyundai Tucson. And that brings me to the topic of the size of the C5 Aircross. Now, the C5 measures 4.5 meters in length. It's 2.1 meters wide, which makes it the widest car in its class. And at 1.7 meters of height, it, it's also the tallest car in its class. This naturally means that you get a lot of interior room inside the C5 Aircross. As you can see, there's an ample amount of headroom, even for people, I think, 
six feet six inches they can fit here easily you also get a really good quality interior you see being french like i said about design they have their own unique uh, sort of idea of what design is like and you can see here they've got this textured material here which is different uh, to the top of the dashboard this gives the interior a highlight you also get contrast stitching uh, the gear lever for instance is a very interesting touch this is something that uh, is unique to french cars mostly uh, it's very handy to use it comes naturally to your hand and it makes uh, shifting gears rather easy it's actually an intuitive operation that i mean look at the gear lever when i'm shifting i know exactly when it's in park when it's in reverse when it's in neutral or when it's in drive so that helps you also get an electronic parking brake uh, you get an engine start stop switch here you get different driving modes you get eco sport c5 aircross is of course going to be front wheel drive only but they give you different terrain modes uh, so you can switch to snow you can switch to mud you can even go into sand mode but i think usually you just need the regular mode for our conditions you also get a lot of storage space inside the c5's cabin in fact they say that inside the cabin you have about 33 liters of storage space including this huge armrest here there's a huge space you can easily store a lot of stuff which obviously gives the car a lot of practicality the c5 aircross also has the biggest boot in its segment so all that is good I also really like the steering. It's high quality. It's just the right thickness to hold. And it's got a flat top, which is interesting. It's got a flat top and a bottom. The top is interesting because, you know, not all the time am I driving with both my hands on the wheel. Yes, I know I should. But when you're stuck in traffic, usually I'm sitting with one hand. And the flat top really makes, you know, holding the steering with one hand easier. When it comes to uh, equipment, you get connectivity options with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, of course. You get an 8-inch touchscreen here which controls your multimedia and your climate control functions, your car settings. All that is controlled via a touchscreen. You do not get a physical button to do that. So that's slightly annoying. But what helps here is because of the ergonomic design, the screen is quite close to me. So it's easy to sort of uh, operate. When in cars, the screen is a bit too far away. It becomes more and more uh, difficult. I still don't like touchscreens, but this is not too bad. When it comes to the instrument console, that's also digital. It's a 12.3-inch screen. Uh, multicolor of course and you can switch between different kind of displays while you're driving uh, to suit your preferences you get cruise control you also get paddle shifters and overall i think the quality of the c5 aircross the design the way everything has been implemented looks really good one of the highlights of course is the seats uh, to enhance comfort citro has given the seats an extra 15 mm of foam padding and you can see here the, the quirky design is also visible here but the seats are exceedingly comfortable the rear seat though is also going to be an important part in the indian market so let's find out how the rear seat space and the seat uh, comfort actually fares now i told you a few minutes ago that at 2.1 meters the C5 Aircross is the widest car in its class and that helps in the interior space. As you can see, uh, the rear seat is divided into three segments and I can fit easily in one. So three full-size adults in the rear seat of the C5 Aircross, that'll be quite easy. The other interesting touch which other cars don't have is that all three seats of the C5 Aircross are adjustable. You can adjust the amount of room, you can adjust the backrest angle and you can fold them individually if you need more space to store your luggage or your holiday gear or your camping gear whatever you want to do with it uh, again comfort wise the rear seat also feels really good i've been driving the c5 across for about five hours and as somebody with a week back i still haven't got backache so i think the seats work quite well and on long drives i think this is will be something very interesting to see how the seats really fare on uh, longer durations but I have a lot of expectations. I think they're going to be great. Another thing about the rear seat, it's also slightly raised compared to the front seat. So you get a better view. Now the C5 Aircross will come in two versions, the feel and the shine. The feel version that we are driving, that's the lower variant. It does not offer two main features. One, it doesn't have LED headlights. It has halogen lamps. Two, the shine version, the upper version, also offers a full panoramic roof, which will be a great touch because on, you know, seated on a higher level, with the roof, with the sufficiently large glass house, I think the view will be much better in the Shine version. And like I said earlier, room is not a problem. As you can see, there's enough headroom and enough uh, width for three adults. So from that practicality perspective, 
I really like the C5 Air Cross. And the quirkiness of you know French design also continues in small touches inside the Citroën. Uh, for instance, if you've got the car on and in gear and you open the door, this is the warning you get. Very unusual. Similarly, if you're driving without a seat belt, as our cameraman is inside the car without the seat belt, you'll hear the slightly different tone that we get in a few seconds. Of course, all the talk about comfort in the interiors and the quirky design aside, what does the C5 Aircross actually like to drive? Well, to start with, I'll tell you the engine and gearbox options that you get. Uh, the C5 Aircross will only be offered with a 2-litre turbocharged diesel engine. It puts out about 175 bhp, 400 nm of torque, and it's paired to an 8-speed automatic gearbox. Uh, it's also front-wheel drive only. Uh, now, as of now, Citroën says they don't have plans for any other engine or gearbox or an all-wheel drive model purely because all-wheel drive sales in this kind of segment are really low. Uh, so, that details out of the way. Uh, right from the get-go, you can tell that uh, the engine is a really refined unit. The NVH levels inside the cabin are very well controlled. There's hardly, there's virtually no vibration. Uh, the engine sound, uh, you, they've used special... Uh, extra amount of sound deadening so the engine sound is also quite muted but you can tell that it's a diesel uh, the good part about the diesel well the torque the 400 nm of torque makes itself available from just over idle uh, so the c5 responds to throttle inputs quite well but the 400 nm of torque also has one slight side effect if you're going into a corner fast you really stamp on the throttle you get some torque steer but that's something that any front wheel drive uh, car with a lot of torque or power will do for you. Other than that, uh, whether driving it in the city or on the highway at high speeds or low speeds, the engine is really tractable. Uh, it works really well. The torque really helps your driving appeal. Uh, the C5 can go quite fast. And I think one of the best things about the C5's drivetrain has to be the 8-speed gearbox. Uh, it works really seamlessly. Uh, the shifts work very well. And, you know, while there is the option of the paddle shifters here, I've not had to use them all day. That's how good the gearbox is. You actually don't even realize that it's, you know, shifting gears. And that, I think, is the hallmark of any good automatic gearbox that you can virtually never tell when the gearbox is shifting up or down. The other thing that uh, Citroën is very famous for globally is their suspension. Over the years, like I said earlier, with the 2CV, with the DS, they've done some great work with hydraulic suspension. Uh, the DS had uh, self-leveling suspension. You could raise the ride height. Yeah, you know, at, at rest, it would uh, sort of go to a lower ride height. So all that work has been uh, very futuristic and also been used by other brands. That's how good Citroën's uh, suspension division is. And on the C5, the shock absorbers fitted, all four shock absorbers fitted on the C5 have a special hydraulic element added to them, which uh, Citroën says softens the ride which uh, takes out the shock of hitting a bump or a pothole or a stone. Uh, and on our roads, I have to say the C5 suspension works really well. It really irons out the bumps. Uh, also, at the same time, the stability at high speeds, at medium speed is also very good. So it might have excellent ride quality, but it's also not at the compromise of handling. Uh, it's not too soft. It just sort of deals with bumps on a really good basis. And I think that is something that is quite unique to the C5. You know, I've driven the uh, Tiguan Allspace and the Hyundai Tucson quite extensively in recent times. And when it comes to ride quality, I think the C5 Aircross is probably superior to both of them quite comprehensively. The steering of the C-Cross is quite light. It works quite well. It's quite direct. But there's not much feel there. So if you are somebody who really values steering feel, well, that could be... A slight negative for you uh, and also the C5's uh, ground clearance is quite healthy yes the design is such that it makes it look like it's got low ground clearance but it has over 200 mm of ground clearance and I did go a little bit of off-roading or rather in rough terrain for our, for the benefit of our videographer and our photographer and the C5 didn't even touch anywhere the rails or the front end or the rear end it didn't touch anywhere so anybody who's thinking that it might be a low ground clearance vehicle but that's not the case uh, with its ground clearance it will deal with our roads absolutely fine
So, in a fiercely competitive market, what do I think of the C5 Aircross? Well, you see, we don't know one um, part of the matrix, which is the price. Uh, the price will be announced later when the C Cross is launched. The launch is expected to happen in March this year. But keeping the price aside, the C5 does have a lot going for it. Uh, it's a handsome looking car. Yes, it's quirky, but I don't think anybody will think that they don't like the design. Uh, it's pretty handsome. It's pretty refined. And I would say it's for a pretty, like I said earlier, mature customer. It's for somebody who's sort of quite confident and they know what they're buying. Similarly for the interiors, actually the interior quality is really good. The uh, isolation from the outside world is quite good. It's got a double laminated windshield and it really does cocoon yourself inside the interior. The seats are, like I said earlier, are absolutely fantastic and the interior is a really good place to spend time in. Uh, the drivetrain also is very good. The engine's powerful. It responds quickly. Uh, it's more than quick enough for everyday driving. I'm a fan of the gearbox. It works really, really well. And I think, you know, uh, like Citroën said, they are only going to produce 100 units a month of the C5 Aircross. And at those volumes, I think the C5 Aircross will find quite a few buyers. Not everybody is looking for a butch SUV. Not everybody is looking for off-road ability or all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive for that matter. And to the mature customer, especially in grade one and grade two towns, I think the C5 Aircross, if priced correctly, could appeal quite a lot and it would go a long way in establishing Citro as a brand in India. You see, at a conference earlier today, Citro officials uh, clearly stated that they were here to stay in India. They will be bringing in more products, including smaller SUVs. They already have a production plant functioning in Tamil Nadu. They have an engine plant functioning in Hosur. So they're saying we've made the investment. We're making engines in India. We're making cars in India. We'll be, the next products will be even more localized. Uh, for instance, the engine and the axles of the C5 Aircross are already manufactured in India and they're looking at more aspects that they can localize. So this would serve as a good establishment product for the brand and tell the Indian customers that the brand is here to stay and they're going to focus on your comfort which I think a lot of customers are looking for and the C5 Aircross could be a great ambassador for the Citroën brand.